Just as there is no better person, no better creation, or anything other than Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is also no better topic to talk about than him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the Nur, he is the Nur, the light that brings, that, that awakens the heart. He is the one that bestows a, a, a just amazement in the eyes of the believers. He's the door that brings hope to the hearts of the believers. He is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we follow him in everything that he does. We, we make wudu the way he taught us to make wudu. We pray the way he taught us to pray. Right? There are some people who don't believe in our hadith. And they say it's, it's not sahih, they say it's not good. And may Allah protect us from being amongst those people, I mean. Yeah, I mean, how do we learn how to pray? Through the hadith, how do we know the movements? Through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how do we know what to say between the movements? Because of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything that we do, we try to do like Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything. In fact, the ulama, they say, the only reason why we can make tayammul, the wudu with the dirt, is because his blessed feet touch the earth. That is what allowed us to even be able, that's what purified the earth. Once his feet touched it, then the whole, whole entire earth was pure. This is Sayyidina Muhammad. This is a man who is so great that everywhere that God's name is, his name is next to it. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The ulama, they say before the time of creation, before anything, when it was just Allah and the wajal, the most merciful, the most powerful, the everlasting, he has no ending and he has no beginning. Allah azza wa jal, he was still in the remembrance of Sayyidina Muhammad. Yeah, this is who our Nabi is. And just as we try to follow him in everything, we try to follow him in how he eats, and how he uses the bathroom, and how he speaks, we try to follow him in every single way, we also have to try to follow him in his death. And today we'll be looking over the last couple of days of the Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it starts in Ramadan. Right? And every Ramadan, Angel Jibril Alayhi Salam would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and go end to end of the Quran of what they had. Right? To ensure that the message was being delivered. And that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had this memorized. Right? The Quran. 
This was this was just what happened every Ramadan. Then Ram Ramadan, he has a dream. And in this dream, something says to him, what you are seeking is ahead of you, so extend your ittikad. What you are seeking is ahead of you, so extend your ittikad. So he does so. And when he does this, Angel Jibreel comes back to him. And he goes over the Quran again. And this is the second time in Ramadan this never happened before. This was unusual. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's extremely intelligent. He's the most learned. So he understands what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is doing. He understands that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is trying to ensure that the message was delivered properly. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has no faults. So of course the message was delivered properly. But he understands as well that this might mean that the Prophet Sallallahu won't be around, uh, uh, around much longer. The Prophet Sallallahu he was a man who was known for being silent. And so he keeps this to himself. I then, as a couple of months go by, it's the month of Shawwal, he meets with Mu'ad ibn Jabal, and they're riding together. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commands Mu'ad to go to Yemen to teach the people their religion. And he says something to Mu'ad, right? And he says, Oh Mu'ad, it may be that this is the last time that you see me. And you have to, you have to understand the context of the relationship between these two people. Yani, mean, this isn't, the, I mean, when we hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we didn't get to witness him. May Allah allow us to witness him, I mean. But we didn't get to witness him like the Sahabi did on a day-to-day -day basis, seeing his relationship with his family, seeing his relationship with his other companions and his children. Yeah, I mean, this is an intimate relationship. And the Prophet Wasallam, the one that you could go to him directly, and you could ask him, how is my relationship with Allah? Is Allah pleased with me or is he upset with me? And the Prophet Wasallam could tell you, and they could tell you what you need to do to be good with Allah Subhanahu I mean, this is who he was talking to. And then Mu'ad, he begins to cry. Because his Nabi told him, I mean, this might be the last time that you see me. So he begins to cry. But just as the Quran tells us, obey your Lord and obey your messenger, Mu'ad, he still goes to Yemen. He still command, he still obeys the commandments of the Prophet wasallam, even though the Prophet wasallam is hinting at his death. Yani this is the this is the the, the, the love of the ashab. Imagine your family tells you, "Oh, you're going on a trip. This might be the last time that you see me." You're gonna be you're gonna be like, "Hold on, what's about to happen?" Right? But this is the Nabi. He he does not lie. It's not, "Oh, maybe I might die." Da, da, da. The Prophet knows, and he's telling him, yani, "This might be the last time that you see me." So the Ashab is smart too, he knows what he's saying, but still he goes and he listens to the Prophet Sallallahu So a few months go by, and the Prophet Sallallahu is doing what he does every day, he's advising the people, right, he's feeding the poor, he's following the funerals, he's doing what the Prophet Sallallahu did. But then the month of the Qa'dah comes, when people get ready for Hajj. And he begins to prepare for to go on Hajj. And you have to understand at this point, it's been 40 plus years of prophetship. It's, like, it's been 40 plus years of him spreading the religion. So if you go to the west, there's a Sahab. If you go to the east, there's a Sahab. If you go to the north, there's a Sahab. Right? Islam is spread. So the people and the Ashab, they realize yani, they haven't seen the face of the Prophet They're yearning for the face of the Prophet so They're yearning to see him and be around him again. So when they hear that he's going to Hajj, well now an excuse is there. They're like, Allah, a good one. So they say 144,000 people run to Medina to go take the trip with the Prophet and the Ashab said that when we, were, when we were walking from Medina to Mecca, 
All you could see was companions riding and walking. And one of the ulama said, it's, it's an age you have to understand that when the Prophet وسلم, was first in Mecca, and when he left, his family was being tortured. They were being killed. There was a boycott on his family. His most beloved Khadija anha, became so skinny that they say you could they said you could see her bones protruding from her skin because of this boycott. And you have to understand she was rich when she married the Prophet. This is what the this is what the Prophet went through. And they said that Khadija radiallahu anha, she she faked her sickness and she acted as if she was healthy because she knew that the Prophet would be hurt if he seen her hurt. And she passed from this. She passed, she ended up being sick and passing from this. So the Prophet وسلم, when he's in Mecca, I mean, he, he loses his wife. He, he loses his most beloved to him. The one that he وسلم, said, Allah bless me by giving me Khadija. This is a special woman. But this was the state of when they left Mecca. So now, 40 plus years later, they're heading back to Mecca. But there's 144 companions with them. And the ulama has said, that it says as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you remember when they used to torture you? Do you remember when they used to pelt you with stones? Today look at your, look at the fruits of your toil, O Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has brought about justice on the tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad and the sunnah that he left. So then he comes from, uh, he comes out of to, to Hajj and he gets up and he gives a, a talk to the to the Ummah. A hit is short, very short. The Prophet was known for giving short speeches, but very all his words were just you could expound on them and expound on them. And he says to the Ummah, O oh Muslims, take the rituals of Hajj from me, for I don't know if I will be with you ever again. I mean, he's hinting towards his death. Then the next day, on the day of Arafat, we were just speaking about it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gets up and he gives his famous speech, his famous farewell speech. And he says, O oh Muslims, your blood. O oh Muslims, your blood. O oh Muslims, your blood, your wealth, and your honor is sacred like the sacredness of this day. He said, O oh Muslims, be good to your women. O oh Muslims, be good to your women. For because you took them on the word of Allah, and Allah made them halal for you through his word. So honor the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being good to your women. And then he said, I have amidst you with something that if you hold to it, that you will never go astray. That's the Quran and the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he addresses the congregation. And he says, you will be, at Allah will ask you in regards to me. And what will you say? And keep in mind, this is 144 ashab, 144,000 ashab. Uh, uh, listening to the Prophet and they say we will say that you convey the message that you advise the Ummah we will say that you gave the revelation so the Prophet وسلم, he looked to the heavens and he said Allahumma fashhad Allahumma fashhad Allahumma fashhad O oh Allah bear witness that I have conveyed the message O oh Allah, bear witness that I have given advice. O oh Allah, bear witness that I have completed the religion. Uh, o oh Allah, bear witness that I have given advice. O oh Allah, bear witness that I have completed the religion. As he said this, Angel Jabril came to him and conveyed the ayat.
Today I have perfected your religion. So the, the, day, the next day, the Prophet them, he gets up and he gives the same speech. The same speech, the same message. That's the importance of it. They say that if you look at the end of the life of, uh, of the ulama and the, you pay attention to the books that they write, a lot of times in those last books, it'll be corrections of maybe mistakes that they made before, or it'll be really the last message that they really want all their students and to leave on this earth, that's what they'll do. Yani, we know the only man follow the Prophet. So the Prophet he gives and he gives the same speech, the same message. Be good to your women, hold on to the religion, hold on to the family, the Prophet. Right? And when he and the second speech, when he gives it again. The ayahs come down. إِذَا جَاءَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا When you see mankind entering the religion of Allah in troops, then praise thy Lord and seek forgiveness of him. Loud, he is ready to show you mercy. To show mercy. As the Prophet ﷺ hears these, these words, and there's a, there's a story where the companions are sitting the, the, after the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the Umbab, when he was the uh, Khalifa, he's sitting and he was Abbas, and he asked the elders, what does this surah mean? Right? What, what does this surah mean? And all the elders, they go around, they're giving their... Um, you know, they're paying, oh, you know, it means this, it means that, da, 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 right? Oh, or they're like trying, right? And I believe some of them were like, I don't know. Then he asked Abbas, right? Uh, uh, and he, he's young, he's young at the time. He said, what does this sort of mean? And he said, the, 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 the description of this sort of is purely a farewell to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and as the Prophet said to Jibreel, it's as if my Lord is giving me my own farewell when these eyes were revealed to him. And Angel Jibreel said to him, with the most respect, O Prophet, verily the Akhirah is better for you than here. Right? So then Hajj ends, and the Prophet goes back to Medina. And then they say it was around the 20, the, a couple of months passed, right? So the, the first month of the year passed, and then we get to Safa. And they say the difference of opinions of Ikhtilaf, or whether it was the 27th or the 28th day, where the Prophet Sallallahu he called for Abu Wahiba. And he said, he said Abu Wahiba, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me to go ask forgiveness for the dead and the living. So come with me. So he goes with him. And then the Prophet وسلم, says in his dua, O dwellers of the grave, glad tidings to you and what you are in compared to what the people outside are in. Calamities are about to be unleashed on them. And we understand that one of the first signs of the end of times is the death of the Prophet That's one of the first signs. 1400 years ago was the first sign of the, day of, the end, uh, of the day of judgment, of the end of time, of the end of the dunya. Right, then the Prophet Sallallahu he turns to Abu Wahiba, and he says to him that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given me a choice to stay here in the world or to meet my Lord, or to go meet my Lord in Jinnah. And again, listen to the response of Abu Wahiba. He says, by my mom and by our fathers. Excuse me, my phone, excuse me. He says, by my mom and dad, be sacrificed for you, choose the dunya. Stay here with us and then die towards the end. This is out of love. He wants the Prophet ﷺ to be around. He doesn't want to bear witness the death of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ says to him, I choose the meeting and the appointment of my Lord instead. 
Then the next day, the Prophet وسلم, he follows the funeral. Right, following the, the janazah. And when he gets home, he falls into a sickness. A fever that they said was so strong. And the, 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 the Arabs back then, when they would wear their turbans, it was thick turbans, thick material. They said that if you put your hand on the, outlay, uh, the outer layers of his turban, you could feel the heat from his forehead. That's how intense the fever was. And he kept going in, in and out of this state of fainting and waking up. And fainting and waking up. And then one day he wakes up and he asks the Ashab to gather water from the different wells of Medina. And when you go there, they have, they have them marked. You can drink from them. You can go visit them, right? And he makes wudu with the different waters from the seven wells. And then he gets up and he, and he gives a speech. And he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given one of his servants a choice. To remain in the dunya or to be with him. And verily the servant chose to be with him. And Abu Bakr, he stands up. And he's old too. He stands up and he says, May, uh, uh, we would sacrifice our mothers and our fathers for you, Ya Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We would sacrifice our mothers and our fathers for you, Ya Muhammad. And he's crying and he's crying. And you have to understand, this is, he's talking to his prophet, but he's also talking to his best friend. This is a man who had an intimate relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had nothing but love for him, sacrificed everything for him, not to look some type of way, not to be praised, but purely out of love for the Prophet ﷺ. When you look at the Ashab and you look at them for examples, what are you witnessing? You're witnessing their level, their different levels of love they had for the Prophet ﷺ. And why was Abu Bakr the greatest? Because he had the most love for Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. And he's saying to this prophet, to his friend, to his companion, we would sacrifice our moms and our fathers for you. And they say that he's crying so much that the other companions begin to cry because of his cry. They don't understand what's going on. They don't have this relationship that Abu Bakr has with him. But out of the tears of saving Abu, or out of the tears of Abu Bakr, they're all crying. So now picture this, you're, you're, it's the Prophet ﷺ, he's sick, and he's telling Abu Bakr, I'm, I'm passing. This is what he's saying to him. Abu Bakr understands he's crying, the whole master is crying. And the Prophet ﷺ tells Abu Bakr, take a seat, sit down. But he says again, we would sacrifice our mothers and our fathers for you, Ya Sayyidina Muhammad. So Allah And the Prophet ﷺ tells him to sit down, so he sits down. I think he says something so profound. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some of the say this is proof why Abu Bakr was the next Khalifa. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, let all the doors of the masjid be closed except the door of Abu Bakr. Let all the doors of the masjid be closed except the door of Abu Bakr. What else does this mean? I and mean, this is why he was the Khalifa. And then he says, I have repaid all of my debts except the debt of Abu Bakr. For the debt of Abu Bakr, I leave to Allah to repay. <laughs> this is who this man was. That this is the way that uh, the Prophet was honoring Abu Bakr. But the Allah That the Prophet was of the best of creation. All other 124, 23,000 and beyond were equal to a single hair on his head. I mean, this is our Nabi. And he's telling Abu Bakr, I can't repay you for what you've done for me. I leave that to your Lord, to our Lord. I leave that for him. This is what Abu Bakr is. They say one of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, was that his entire family became Muslim. His mother, his father, his children, all of them became Muslim. And his, the last one to take Shahada was his father. 
And on the day that his father took him, he was crying. And they were, and the were like, "What's happening? Like, why are you crying?" And it, yeah, he just looked at the love of Abu Bakr for the Prophet. He said, "Because I wish it would have been the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu who took Shahada, because I would have known that that would make the Prophet happy." In a moment of happiness and joy, you know, most of us, something good happened. We're like, Ooh. feel like, you know, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm feeling good. But in that moment, all he's thinking about is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, I mean, this was a man who was outwardly Abu Bakr, but inwardly just Muhammad. Everything he did was for saving that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Pure love. I mean, we have to love this Prophet How can we say we believe if we don't seek to see him? How can we say we believe if we don't love him? How can we believe if we don't follow him? I mean, it's like someone says, you know, man, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm an engineer. You, you ever study engineer? No. Not how are you engineer? Oh, because I, I want to be an engineer. Because I like engineering. Well, why don't you study? I don't know. <laughs> right? So how does it look when we say, I mean, we're followers of Sayyidina Muhammad or something? Oh, you follow the Sunnah? When I can. Sometimes. Or and I'm kind of. That looks the same way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I mean, you, you, do you think you can say you believe and you won't be tested? Yeah, I mean, the one who safeguards us is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. And we understand that when the Prophet is in his grave every Monday, a blessed day. Look at, look at the Kufar. Look, at, look how they try to make Mondays. Man, ah, oh, it's Monday again. Ah, oh, Mondays are horrible. There's a whole trend about it, right? But Mondays are a blessed day. They're the day that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed. They're the day that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Barzai, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so shows him the actions of all the believers. And the good actions, he says, Alhamdulillah. He's happy, he's pleased with me, he's happy to see Ummah. And the bad actions, what does he do? Yani he seeks forgiveness for the, for the ones who are committing the sins. Yani in his death, he's thinking about his Ummah. In his life, there wasn't a day that he didn't make dua for his ummah. And on, in the akhirah, we know that all prophets are given a dua that is going to come true, and he saved his for the akhirah. So in the dunya, in the barzak, and in the akhirah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is thinking his, about his ummah. This is the ummah that we're from. So we have to love him. It's obligatory. We have to. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam. May Allah forgive us. And may Allah make us amongst the salihin. I ask Allah for forgiveness and I pray to you that Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam. So now we get to the last couple of days of the life of the Prophet And it's really heavy days for the, the, the Ashab. Really, really heavy. I mean, this is a man that I mean, they're, they're not even considering his death. They're not even thinking that the Prophet is going to die. Right? Us, us younger people, we, yeah, we don't even think about that for ourselves. But this is a great man, the greatest man, the greatest creation. Yani the concept of him dying yani is it's not in their minds, but they're now they witnessing it. Right? So towards the end of the days of the Prophet Sallallahu life, he's still going in and out of sickness. He's or a, a faint, a fainting. He keeps fainting, waking up and fainting. And when he wakes up, he remembers that he had seven dinars in his household. And he says, yeah, Aisha, give the 70 dinars in sadaqah. And then he faints. 
And he wakes back up and he says, Yeah, I need to give the seven dinars and seven of them. And then he fakes. And this happens several times. And Aisha, she's not disobeying. She's just busy taking care of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wakes up again. He says, yeah, Aisha, did you give the seven dinars and said that? And she had it. And then he said, how will I look if I meet my Lord with seven dinars in my household? Understand who's saying this. Yeah. This is a man who's guaranteed Jannah to for those. Guaranteed. And yet, in his death, he's worried about how he's going to meet our Lord, his Lord. Yeah, I mean, how will we meet our Lord? How much will we have? What will be our state? We have to prepare for our deaths. That's, the, that's one of the wisdoms behind going to Janazah. Is the remembrance of death. They say even deja vu. You know when you get deja vu, they say it could be two things. You're remembering before time when we were all showed our lives, and we said, "Yeah, we can do this." We're remembering them, so it's as if we're reliving it, but it's also a reminder of the day of judgment that will be shown our lives again. So when you get a deja vu, think, "Yeah, I'm going to see this again on the day." I'm going to be shown this moment again in the day of judgment. Right? So this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, he's thinking about how he will be his Lord. So then uh, again, a, a, a day or two passes. And it's a Monday. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is laying on the chest of Aisha radiallahu anha. Right? You have to understand that relationship too. This is a very intimate relationship. Yani the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he bear witness the death of Khadija radiallahu anha. He bear witness the death of his daughters and his sons, except for the death of, uh, death of Fatima radiallahu anha. He bear witness the death of his family. He bear witness the death of his companions. But Aisha radiallahu anha is bear witnessing the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All she knows it's the Prophet ﷺ. From the young age of the some scholars say six to nine, when they got married, Yani, this is from that age, all she knows is Sayyidina Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said that later on, after the Prophet passed, she lived for like another 60 years. 60 years, I can't remember the exact number, but a lot of years. Without the Prophet, ﷺ, they said that if you looked at her life, all she was trying to do is relive the day she had with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she is the one who was bringing comfort to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his last moments. When, she, when he was laying against her chest, and someone walked in and they were using a miswak, and, she, and the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was looking at it. Yearning for it. So Aisha the Lord, took it and she used her own saliva to wet it and then she brushed the teeth of the Prophet. This is intimate. And then the Prophet he keeps putting his hand in a bowl of water and wiping his forehead. Because the fever's hot. He's hot. So he keeps lifting it up. And then he says, Oh, that he says, La ilaha illallah, death has its pain. La ilaha illallah, death has its pain. And when he says that, Aisha, she hurries and she starts, she starts making dua to heal the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, La, but make dua that I have the companionship of the Most High. Those are words that are heartbreaking. And this is where the tradition comes out. When someone is sick, you ask Allah, give them shifa. Give them shifa, but at a certain point, you make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them jinnah from those. So Aisha radiallahu anha is witnessing this with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's witnessing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is about to pass. And as he goes to lift his hand up, his hand drops. And the Prophet وسلم, passes. And Aisha begins to cry. And she begins to 
understand what is happening. And they said a beautiful fragrance filled the room. And when they called for Omar, then they called for Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr, and Omar came first because Abu Bakr lived farther out. But Abu Bakr said that when he came before he entered the house of Aisha, he seen Nur coming from the house. He seen light coming from the house. And he said when he entered, he smelled the fragrance. And then he picked the, the sheet off of the box or something, and he kissed him on his forehead. And he said, oh, my friend, oh, my prophet, you have tasted death, and indeed you will not taste death twice. And the Ummah is in shambles. The Ummah is shaken. The worst thing, the worst calamity, you understand, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the worst thing that could ever happen, that the Ummah will ever witness is the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the worst thing that will happen to mankind. And the Ashab are witnessing it. And Umar, he goes almost crazy for a moment. And tribes start to stop paying their zakat and stop uh, uh, um, interacting with the, the, the community. And the community starts to break off in different sections. A whole lot is happening because of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I mean, we have to remember that good things about his death. The last words that he said. We have to remember how he lived his life. We have to follow the path of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We have to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see you with the eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to walk with the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah allow us to hear with the ears of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we have the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad encompass our entire being. May Allah forgive our parents. May Allah give our parents the highest level of Jinnah. May Allah protect them from the hellfire. May Allah give us a good day on that day of standing. May Allah allow us to receive our book in our right hands. May Allah allow us to have no reckoning on the day of reckoning. Uh, easy standing on the day of standing. No regrets on the day of regrets. Allow us to be those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allow us to be those who are in the company of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allow us to have good death and allow the shahada to be the last words of our tongue when we die. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Salam alayhi wa sallam.